I could arrange this series in such a way that you have to build up to mindfulness. I could talk about how bad for you stress is, or I could talk about neuroscience. But I'll get to that later. What you probably want to know right off the bat is just what mindfulness is. Where did it come from? And how can you use it to get just a little more calm and relaxation into your life? We'll look at that first. And from there, we'll delve into how you can utilize some more technical neuroscience in order to tap into the more profound capabilities of your brain. So, what exactly is mindfulness? Essentially, mindfulness is a form of meditation that has been adopted by CBT. CBT, in turn, is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, a psychotherapeutic approach that can be used to treat all manner of psychological conditions like anxiety, phobias, addiction, etc. Mindfulness essentially gives us a tool that we can use to not only calm our thoughts and escape the stresses of the day, but also reflect on the contents of our mind in the interests of self-improvement. Meditation generally has something of a bad reputation. That is to say, a lot of people associate it with religion or esoteric ideas, and they think they can't meditate unless they're, quote, spiritual. This can be off-putting for someone who doesn't hold any religious beliefs or who doesn't like esoteric ideas in general. But in fact, you can practice meditation whether you are religious or an atheist. All meditation really is, is a directed attempt to control your thoughts and the contents of your mind, and thereby to gain some peace and quiet, or at least to be able to better understand the contents of your own brain. Many types of meditation, such as transcendental meditation, instruct you to think of absolutely nothing, and often this is achieved by focusing on your breathing, a mantra, or a physical object like a candle flame. This can be difficult for beginners, though, as they constantly find their mind wandering. The idea behind mindfulness meditation is not to try and empty your thoughts, but instead to simply step back from them and observe them like a detached third party. This way, you aren't letting your thoughts affect you and make you stress, but you also aren't going to struggle with not being, quote, allowed to think of anything. Meanwhile, using this technique will also allow you to become more aware of your own thoughts, and thereby able to edit any thoughts that are leading you into trouble. For instance, if you constantly find yourself thinking about ways you could hurt yourself, you might notice that this is a bad habit and attempt to fix it. This may be the long-term aim of mindfulness when used in CBT. In the short term, though, we are simply going to use it in order to remove ourselves from our thoughts and emotions so that we can get some calm and thereby recover ready to tackle the day ahead. This is what mindfulness refers to in most cases, but it has also been appropriated to mean a lot more. If mindfulness means being more aware of your thoughts, then it can also be applied outside of meditation and to the way that you go about your day. In this case, mindfulness simply means being mindful of what you're focusing on and what you're thinking about at any given point. This is very useful because very often you'll find that your mind isn't perhaps where it should be. For example, if you're walking through a beautiful scenic woodland but you're thinking about work, then as far as your body is concerned, you may as well be at work. In this case, mindfulness can be used simply to make yourself more aware of where you are and to actually focus on what's around you. That means feeling the breeze on your skin, looking at the beautiful flowers and smelling the fresh air. When you do all that, you'll benefit much more from the experience. Likewise, you can use mindfulness to direct your attention to all manner of other things. For example, your physical sensations. Often, we aren't aware of just how we're sitting or how we're standing or how we're feeling. Take a moment right now to reflect on this. How comfortable are you at the moment? Does any part of your body hurt? If you're sitting down, then where is most pressure on you? Can you feel your clothes against your body? A watch, maybe. How warm are you? Are you leaning more to one side? This kind of mindfulness can be useful if you want to try and fix your posture, but also if you want to improve your abilities in sports or just move more efficiently. Being more mindful of the way you speak can meanwhile help you to speak more eloquently, to stop using derogatory words, to stop swearing, or to change the whole way that people perceive you. 
For example, if you want to sound more intelligent, then you can simply try using bigger words or speaking a little more slowly. You can also use mindfulness to be happier in everyday life. Try to stop letting negative emotions affect you by identifying them as temporary and destructive. You can simply notice that you're getting angry and acknowledge that your thoughts will be tainted by that. With practice, this can make you a much calmer and much happier person. But what do you find when you try to do this? In all likelihood, you find that you forget. This is just the same way that you forget to pick up bread when your other half asks you to, and it's just the same way that you forget to pick up your keys on the way out of the house. The point is, most of the time we have no control over what we are focused on or what we are paying attention to. And as such, we find ourselves forgetting things, getting into bad habits or stressing when we should be enjoying ourselves. Practicing mindfulness both as a form of meditation and during the day can help you to improve your ability to control your thoughts and thereby to decide how you want to improve yourself and what you want to focus on.